let's get started. Uh, hi again. Thank you for coming here today. I realize we are between you and, your, and the lunch, so we will try to get you all out by 12.30. So today, uh, we, we are going to talk about uh, beyond Bosch and CPI. So what that means is, uh, you know, basically, uh, the, our journey for the last one year. So in May 2015, last year, a little over a uh, year, and I remember the date because uh, last year the summit was right after Mother's Day weekend, so I traveled that day. So last year it was just Ning and me at the conference. Our CPI was an early preview and we demoed it. And we're really glad to be back again here this year and share our incredible journey the last one year, releasing the services, running customers in production, and building a Microsoft Cloud Foundry community within Microsoft. So our goal today is to share our experience and our journey. Ning, if you don't mind, hit the slide next, please. Um, about us, who are we? As I mentioned, right, we have a small Cloud Foundry community within Microsoft. There are a few folks here in the room as well, in addition to us. Uh, I'm a program manager primarily working on Azure PaaS services, Azure first party PaaS services, and uh, uh, open, source pa open source PaaS service integration as well. And with me is Gil. Gil is a, a partner architect who primarily focuses on ISV onboarding. And we have Ning, who, who heads the team, uh, who's a program manager for Cloud Foundry project, and she works in the open source team. So this is just a small team. The rest of us are, you can find us in the booth. So today in the 30 minutes, we want to walk away with these three takeaways, Cloud Foundry plus Azure. So we'll spend a few minutes talking about the why and the how. Then we want to show you how you can easily get started uh, with the click of a button, deploy Cloud Foundry on Azure. And finally, we just announced the Azure service brokers. These are service brokers for Azure first party services. And Ning will do a demo of that. Thanks, Ning. So uh, before we get started, right, let's look at what is supported today. Cloud Foundry on Azure, where are we? What's supported? So number one is the open source Cloud Foundry is generally available today. In addition, Pivotal Cloud Foundry is fully supported. We also have a single click template in our marketplace that, out of, that allows you to deploy PC of an Azure with the click of a button. And just announced, hard thing is uh, service brokers. So these are the things that are today supported in Azure. And if you go to the next slide, uh, and one more, thank you. So just to quickly give some highlights of uh, Cloud Foundry and Azure in terms of what's supported. So, you know, a lot of questions, customers, a lot of folks ask us, you know, why do we support Cloud Foundry and Azure? What's the primary driver? The number one reason for us to work on Cloud Foundry is many of our customers have asked this. So it's frequently asked by our customers. It's a great option for running Java workloads on Azure. In addition, it's fully owned and supported by Microsoft and it also has, it's backed by our executive. So it's a full executive commitment. In addition, we have a great joint engineering model with Pivotal. And now, you know, in the, from recent news, you might have seen Microsoft is also invested in Pivotal success. So a lot of, again, in just one year, uh, you know, this project picked up a lot of momentum and uh, a lot of cool highlights to share. So a lot of, you know, in, in the next couple, three, four slides, I want to look, I want to give an overview of some of the most commonly asked questions and try to summarize uh, where we are. So the first question is, uh, where does uh, Cloud Foundry fit in Azure ecosystem? So Azure has a lot of past services. So, so our customers ask us, where does it fit in the ecosystem? When do you use what? So this, this diagram is what we call uh, pass continuum. This describes all of the PaaS services in Azure, uh, you know, starting from the IaaS side to the PaaS side and in between. 
And I'm not planning to cover all of any of these in detail in, except Cloud Foundry. But if you look at Cloud Foundry, Cloud Foundry sits at the same level as other first party services. It's built on the same infrastructure like the rest of the services. And at the end of the day, we leave it to the customers to choose the platform that's right for their applications. All right, so this is about where it fits. The second next question that gets asked often is, uh, in what regions can you deploy Cloud Foundry and Azure today? So if you go to the next slide, so if you've seen uh, Azure regions, so Azure today has been announced in 32 regions. So this is more than any other cloud combined. And out of these, 24 are operational. So this is a huge, huge investment. This is serious stuff, right? So we are making a big bet on this, growing our infrastructure. The goal for Azure is to be in all major regions. And where Azure cannot be, Azure Stack will be there. So I, I just wanted to actually take a quick pause and ask a question that I wanted to ask in the beginning, which, but I forgot, is how many, how many folks in the room use Azure? Thank you. This store doesn't count, it's all Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a few of you. So for those of you who are not familiar, right, so this is one of the, the strategic investments for Azure is uh, the investment or growing all these Azure regions. So, and so out of these regions, some of these are sovereign clouds. For example, Azure China is an example, which is a sovereign cloud. Germany, which was announced, is also a sovereign cloud. So these are all the regions. Uh, there's another government cloud as well. So these are all the uh, public cloud and sovereign clouds where you could run Cloud Foundry. All right, next one. A little bit about the Bosch project. So Bosch, Bosch CPI, as everybody in the room knows what CPI is, so I will not talk about it. Just like any other CPI for any cloud, Azure's version is also fully open sourced. We have a, a dedicated engineering team that started small and it's growing. It's aligned with the community engineering practices. We work very closely with the community. So if anybody in the room has worked with us on this project, many thanks to you. And the most important thing for us is the whole CPI, the whole Azure, it's designed to work both in Azure public cloud or the Azure Stack, which is an on-prem data center. So when Cloud Foundry, when it becomes available, our goal is to make it easy to deploy Cloud Foundry in Azure Stack. So yeah, and we have a committed roadmap. Some of it we'll share today. If you want what's coming in the pipeline, please feel free to stop by your booth. Next slide. Yeah, so the last, uh, so the, uh, another question that we get often is, uh, uh, you know, this is a new service gone in production, just like any other services, how ready is it for enterprise workloads? So, uh, you know, today with Cloud Foundry in the last one year, by, you know, by working with customers, we have actually exercised many enterprise scenarios, and these are some of the examples. So you can take Cloud Foundry and do an active-active configuration or a multi-region deployment. Uh, you know, this is just a topology I've, I've put there. Uh, you know, things like securing your deployments, isolating them. So most of the enterprise scenarios are supported today, and many of them are in the roadmap. All right, so with that high-level overview, I'm going to give it to Gil to talk about Pivotal Cloud Foundry. All right, well, that was solid. <laughs> I'm gonna pay attention to where the boundaries on the stage are. Yeah, I'll try not to fall as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Kundana, and as Kundana mentioned, I'm uh, an Azure architect. I work uh, exclusively with ISV partners who are onboarding onto Azure and enabling their solutions on Azure. Uh, over the past uh, six, eight months, my life has become almost exclusively Cloud Foundry, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, and we're working very closely. And this is just some examples of the work that we have done over the past uh, few months. Uh, this is a picture of a hack fest we had where we brought together a group of people who were just getting started within Microsoft on various projects around Cloud Foundry. We brought them out into um, Redmond. We had uh, some pivotal folks who were doing some training with us, and then we did some of our own projects. And out of this, we have a growing community. We have, uh, I think, our, we have 
anybody uses Yammer, we have our internal Yammer group. It's got almost 100 folks on it, and we're actively working um, together and supporting each other. Um, you may have seen the Ford project announcement, so a lot of us worked on that, either in one way or another, and behind the scenes, helping each other. Um, and in addition, you may have seen around the time of the Ford announcement that we brought to market a marketplace offer, which I'm going to talk about in a second, which allows you to single click out of the marketplace and deploy a test environment in Azure. Uh, we're also working uh, side by side with um, Pivotal engineers. We have Azure engineers who are, are going to be spending time with Pivotal directly. And um, we're also advising on architecture with our customer advisory team. And you know, again, starting with Kundana and Ning's work, which we're all very lucky that they started, uh, we're uh, fully supported on Azure. So how can you deploy Cloud Foundry with one click? I like to think of this part of our presentation as easy ways for you to get started. Even if you, I saw we had I'm going to just call it 20% in the audience who have played around with Azure. These uh, couple of slides, I threw some links in here, and these, this content will be available to everybody after the summit. But it's super easy to get started with Azure, and it's super easy to single click and get started with Cloud Foundry on Azure. So a fundamental um, basic uh, foundation of this is the Azure Resource Manager. And that is essentially the API for everything that happens within Azure. And it not only is the API, but it includes a really easy template-driven way to create things in Azure. So you can build a JSON template, you send it to the Azure Resource Manager, and you get stuff. It's all related, it's all pre-configured. We actually have an extensive library, and I'm gonna show these in just a second, but we have an extensive library of pre-built templates to construct uh, a lot of common use cases within Azure. And um, the open source Cloud Foundry, the first uh, release that uh, came out last year, the Bosch components and the initial networking is all based on a pre-configured Azure template, which you can go to and you can look at that. <clears throat> so again, resource manager is foundational to this. From there, you, you use ARM. Um, and then we have now uh, built a marketplace, so a lot of popular software solutions that you may be familiar with, may be used to using in the cloud, are available in the marketplace from a single click. And uh, based on that, we built the uh, PCF on Azure offering. And additionally, if you get into trouble, we've done a really nice job in partnership with Pivotal writing a deployment guide. So let's. Take a quick look at these. Um, where is the browser? Okay, there we go. Okay, so for starters, That's not uh, oh, it's on the uh, needs to be moved over to here, right? Okay. Now I can't see the screen. Can we make it a single screen? All right, I'll just improvise. So um, you don't usually hear people talking about documentation as being very exciting, but if you haven't looked at any of the Microsoft sites lately, we've put a tremendous amount of investment into the documentation. There's a lot of great examples, there's tutorials, there's getting started guides, and there's really tremendous detail about how to do things. This is just the example of the resource manager um, documentation landing page, and it's really quite extensive. So based on this, I can, where is the mouse? Okay. <laughs> uh, we, over, since resource manager has come out, uh, and this is something that Microsoft is really doing a heck of a lot of work on internally and with the community, is we built this library, and it's, you can see it's on GitHub, anybody can look at this, anybody can contribute and participate, of quite a lot of common use cases of pre-configured uh, solutions that you can deploy right onto Azure. <clears throat> and again, you may have seen this at some of the previous presentations, but this is our GA guidance for Bosch and Cloud Foundry on Azure. 
So again, you'll see there's a resource template in here, and then from the resource template, and the, your, your dev jump box is created, and then you can go right in and launch deployment scripts just like you would on any Cloud Foundry. And this is the marketplace. So uh, let's see, what's that number there? It's now 3,700 and growing, and a lot of my colleagues are actively working with names you would all recognize. Um, in fact, Actually, I think this was yesterday. We just made a really nice announcement with Jenkins. So there's Jenkins integration. So we're working really closely with them. So just to give you an example, if you look for any of your favorite solutions in here, you're likely to find them. If I go in here and search for Pivotal, hopefully I typed it correctly. All right. And there is the offer. So if I select that, how are we doing on time? OK, good. Um, I can single click right into here and it's going to launch. So let's just take a quick look at what that does for us. So that deploy button, and actually if you look at the quick start library that I showed in GitHub, every single one of those templates also has a deploy button. And what the deploy button does is it just takes a template, starts the Azure portal, and takes you right to a launch page with the template. Now when you do a marketplace offering, you, you, the quick launch goes to the partner's um, launch page and you can see there's uh, extensive description and it's, it's really pretty much what was on the marketplace landing page, also is in here. And uh, I'll show this at the end, but this is the only at the bottom. The deployment guide is here as well. So if we, uh, which I didn't mean to click on. That's the deployment guide. Um, okay, but if I click on create, oh. <laughs> all right, we had, we were using several people's laptops, so we have different logins. So what you would see if I had the correct login here is there's an entry screen, there's a few fields that you need to enter so that Bosch has the right credentials in order to create things in Azure, and then also, this is a commercial offering, so you do need a PivNet token, but it is a 90-day free trial. Um, and then that would start to launch the entire Cloud Foundry. Now, this is a pre-set size that's meant for POCs and testing, but it's, again, you enter your secure credentials, hit click, and uh, you're off to the races. Um, and so, again, if, if you're doing that, <laughs> this is, okay. Uh, this guide will help you all. If you've hit something that's an issue, this guide is, is probably in here. Okay, we've done a pretty, a lot of people have battle tested this to, to make sure we have all the appropriate guidance in here. So, let's go back to PowerPoint. So, Gil, that template deploys about 50 VMs, right? Uh, yeah, it expands setup, to yeah. somewhere like 50. I think the actual number is in the deployment okay. guide, uh, okay. Kudana, but it's yeah. something like 50, 60 VMs as it you know, Cloud Foundry has a lot of worker roles, and then it settles down to like 30, 35 And that's fully automated. VMs. Yeah, and that's all automated. It's just, you know, runs. And so if you have entered all of your, so let me get back to here, we're wrong way. <laughs> uh, you will see all of your VMs running once you've launched. So this is just a screenshot of a running Cloud Foundry that has several VMs. So with that, over to Ning. Um, we're, we're kind of optimizing it all the time. The last thing I've seen was somewhere in the hour or so time frame. Of course, you know, any Cloud Foundry that you would launch, that is going to depend on how many, you know, how big you make it. Right? This is, like we said, about 30 to 50 VMs. Okay? Uh, so, on to service brokers. Okay. Thank you, Gil and uh, Kandana. So, we are the engineering team for Azure uh, Open Source. And in the past two years, uh, our major focus is Cloud Foundry and enable Cloud Foundry on Azure. And we work closely with the community and with our customers. It has been an incredible journey. Um, 
Here you can, uh, just as Kandana mentioned, CPI is the first project we work on. Uh, with that, um, that is the first interface we have between Cloud Foundry and Azure. And uh, we, uh, we have a preview last year, about the same time for the summit. And the uh, end of last year, we finally announced the GA. And CPI is just the first step. Beyond that, actually, there are a lot of more components in Azure that can contribute to the ecosystem of Cloud Foundry. And from this graph, you can see um, for the infrastructure of Cloud Foundry and at different level, we have a component in Azure that our customer is interested in asking us to integrate and contribute to Cloud Foundry component. For example, the um, application gateway for uh, routing and load balancing, for Azure, direct, uh, Azure um, Active Directory for authentication, block storage, um, and service, um, um, service brokers, and then our uh, Microsoft Operation Manager suite for monitoring and logging. So today, I'm going to focus on service brokers, because as um, Gil and Kandana just mentioned, we just released the uh, public preview of our first batch of service brokers last week. Um, can we take a quick look here? Here, is, um, here are the five service brokers, the Azure Blob Storage, Event Hub, Service Bus, Radius, and Document DB. These are the top, um, on the top list customer is, uh, was uh, asking. Um, and you can also see, later I will show the UI. Um, we have a, a simple and consistent interface. So whatever you are comfortable today to develop for service brokers on your existing platform, uh, it's consistent. Uh, you can use the same way to, um, to uh, configure it and to use it. Um, we call it Meta Service Broker. What this does is we have one single service broker interface you only need to install and configure one service broker. And uh, after that, all the services, the five services, is included in this package. We just need to enable it. And this is totally open source, so it's open to community to contribute and, uh, and adding feedbacks. For different roles for Cloud Foundry, uh, for service broker, we have different guidance. Um, for admins, we have, we have guidance on, on guide you through the process of creating service, finding services. And for developers, we just need to, all you need to do is to utilize the environment variables to access the service incidences. And then for contributors, and uh, we have guidance on how you can write your own service brokers to, um, if you like any Azure services, you can use the same way to add to our package. So next, I'm going to take a look. Of, um, so this is where our service broker in GitHub And we have the, um, this is the Meta Service Broker. Here's the overview and um, the guidance for admin and the uh, guidance for each individual services. Uh, the Service Bus and the Event Hub are in same service. And then the contributors guidance. Okay, so um, the next, I'm going to uh, walk through the step how an, an admin can deploy and uh, utilize a service broker. Here, I already have a Cloud Foundry deployment. And uh, with that, I just install our Meta Service Broker as application to this Cloud Foundry deployment. And right now, since this is a PCF deployment, um, you can see if I uh, check this uh, marketplace, uh, these are the default service brokers uh, that is installed uh, that does not have any Azure services yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a service. OK. 
Okay, let me double check that. Okay, so it uh, seems to me the service broker is currently created. Um, this is the meta service broker I just mentioned, uh, which is appears to be a single service broker, but it contains all the services. Uh, in order for you to access all the, service, uh, uh, all the services, you need to enable them. So let me uh, enable the service broker. They're better. Let me just that's a little bit better typing. Okay, so we enable the first service broker, which is the blob storage. Enable the next one, which is Azure Service Bus. Okay, and uh, let's enable. Remember, Azure Service Bus have both Service Bus and Event Log. Now we enable the document DB. And finally, the Redis service. Redis cache service. Okay, so all the five services is now enabled. Uh, what we can do is we can do a marketplace. So from here, if you look at the marketplace, um, you can see the Azure service brokers are already here. And they are available for the developer to, um, to use. Next, um, the admin wanted to uh, make a service instance so the, uh, the developer can take advantage of it. So he first needs to create a, a service I'll specify the um, plan. Blob. Okay, um, my spelling is really bad. Okay, so um, Oh, it's already created, uh, seemed to me. So in order to, um, so the service is created. In order for the application to use it, uh, you need to actually, uh, let me see. Okay. 
uh, you actually need to look at your um, um, applications. So let's go to our application and uh, here, uh, let's see. So if you look at your application, you will find So all you need to do with your application is um, you can take advantage of the service. Um, let's see the uh, environment, uh, environment variables we just created for you. So here you can see um, uh, that's the Azure Blob service, and then uh, if you have the service enabled, and then you can access the environment variable. So here, um, what? Oh, okay. So finally, uh, let's take a quick look of this. Okay. So this is the PCI App Manager uh, with uh, the Cloud Foundry deployment. And uh, um, you can see with the marketplace, all the Azure service broker is now enabled. And uh, you just need to run your application to uh, bind it later. Okay. Yeah. I'll switch this later. Yeah. So thank you. So we have a couple of other sessions. Uh, if you want to learn more about Azure, uh, we have a, a session on .NET, and then we have a, a also tomorrow a panel where you can come and ask some tough questions. No? no? <laughs> because these guys are taking some, signing them up for tough questions. But hope to see you around in the booth, if not there. Thank you. Thank you.